I've been doing setup wars for over 10 years now, you guys. This show is my baby. It's helped shape what this channel is and who I am as a person. I have gained so much inspiration, so many great ideas from all the amazing setups that have been featured on the show. And that is why what I'm about to say, I'm gonna say with a very heavy heart. Just like all good things, unfortunately, it does come to an end. And what you guys are watching right now is gonna be the final episode of Setup Wars. For 2025. <laughs> I'm starting to give some of you guys a heart attack this holiday season, but Setup Wars ain't going nowhere. If anything, we're just warming up, baby. So welcome to Setup Wars episode 371. We got another banger episode for you guys, so sit back, relax, and let's get started. the gift everyone wants this holiday season. And no, I'm not talking about handcuffs and whips. I'm talking about CD keys. Whether you need access to Microsoft Office for school or work, or you're building yourself a PC with Windows 11, you can find keys to all of that and more at VIP or CDKey.com. The best part is they cost only a fraction of the original retail price, saving you tons of money to put towards other meaningful gifts. This holiday season, they have extended the discount to 28% by using the code TS25. This will only last till the end of December before going back down in January. Once again, the code is TS25, so make sure to put that in before you check out. And afterwards, all you have to do is visit the user center section up top, navigate to your orders so you can copy and paste the key into the activation settings of Windows to get full access to Windows features. We are kicking off the show with a setup paying tribute to Demon Slayer and this couldn't have come in at a better time. I don't even need to tell you about it because everyone in the grandmother knows that their movie has been breaking insane records at the box office lately. And my guy here is repping Zenitsu for his wallpapers, who in my opinion was the most badass character in the whole movie. I don't want to spoil anything, but please go watch it. It will be absolutely worth your time. Anyways, back to the setup. So Joseph's an architectural designer and that wall in the back is living proof of it. RGB lines in a zigzag that kind of look like the lighting from Zenitsu's attacks framed by some cool wall panels, which are then in return framed by slat panels, which are also framed by Govi glide bars. We are in frameception over here. My man thought of everything. He's running two monitors, a little offset from each other, the main is a Corsair Zanion Flex 45 inch and the secondary is a 27 inch LG Ultra Gear in vertical mode. I don't think I've seen that Corsair monitor in any Setup Wars video like ever. And if you guys recall, I actually originally reviewed it a couple years back. I don't think we've seen any new bendable screens since then. Besides those two, I do see a couple more screens on the other side, so I'm guessing it's a secondary setup or work in progress. Unfortunately, we don't have any info on that at the moment. Thanks to the spacing of the monitors, the Edifier QR65 speakers sit perfectly symmetrical and a monitorizer puts the ultra right at eye level and adds room for its charging docks and stream deck. The desk space looks super clean. I mean, everything he needs is within reach and the decor with the couple of fake plants ties everything nicely together. The peripherals of choice are the Mel Geek Mojo 84 keyboard paired with a Logitech G502 X Plus Lightspeed. Cables are completely out of sight. They are tucked under and behind the desk with no slack whatsoever. Having them all so tight might make upgrading the setup a bit trickier later on, but you know, with the gear he's running, I doubt he'll need to change much anytime soon. His beast of a PC that's powering the whole thing hangs underneath the desk and packs an i9 13900K paired with a Gigabyte Aero RTX 4090. Lovely, lovely stuff. Such a strong setup to kick off the show and seriously guys, go watch Demon Slayer movie when you get a chance. Thank you Joseph for sharing this with us. Guns N' Roses would have loved this setup because welcome to the jungle, baby. It belongs to Peyton from Minnesota who works in security and built a space for gaming and school. There's no mention in his notes as to what motivated him to go with this specific theme, but it does have a unique vibe. The star here is of course the wall treatment. Those Amazon panels grab the attention immediately. When you look at the setup, 
and the light bars on each side, framing one panel and the window boost that effect. Even though I'm not a fan of the placement, symmetry wasn't an option here because of the window, unfortunately. Still, I do think they are quite oversized for their purpose and this setup specifically. Shrinking them to half the size and maybe mixing in a shelf or two with collectibles or even acrylic posters like the ones we recently added on our store would have added balance without losing out on the theme. He runs two scepter monitors in a T layout, a 30 inch 200 hertz as the primary on its stock stand and a 27 inch on an articulating arm. A small riser lifts the main display and leaves a bit of storage underneath, although right now it is mostly home to the digital clock. For peripherals, he's got a Keychron 8 Pro keyboard and the Logitech G305 mouse on top of a plain black mouse pad. Other than that, there's a controller tucked behind the left monitor and his SteelSeries headset hangs underneath the desk. I get that the side monitor is pulled forward to not only look better, but also be closer to you, but it does eat up a lot of the space on the left side of your desk. It is of course not necessary to fill in every inch of surface area though, so if it works for you, then roll with it. Cable management looks tidy. Wires are tied together and mounted to the underside of the desk, so nothing is dangling around like your grandpa's jewels. The PC keeps the theme going with some fake vines on top, and it's built inside the O11 Vision with a Ryzen 5 4500 and a Gigabyte RTX 4060. My man even has a replica Glock 19 in there to keep the GPU running at 110%. I might have to do the same to get more FPS out of mine. Solid setup overall, Peyton. With just a few visual changes, it will definitely stand out a lot more. Thank you for sending this in and give little Griffin a pat from us. Even trim the one for the sim rig to fit the desk corner perfectly. Cable management is just superb. Zero wires in sight and he skinned the triangle bracket and the cable runs with the same beach panels as the wall. So everything just blends in perfectly. He is a welder by profession, so all that attention to detail with the desk should have been expected. In a way, this also explains his love for Iron Man, which we can see both on the desk with the arc reactor as well as the custom-built Iron Man showcase with a 32-inch Samsung frame TV that shows clips from the various Iron Man movies. Besides the Iron Man showcase, the decor with the track and Formula One art as well as the set of wall plants tie everything together beautifully. In the middle of it all is the tower that feeds both setups, a custom build in the Fantex NV7 with 11 freaking fans. It's also got the Ryzen 7 7700X3D and an ASUS ProArt RTX 4080 Super. Such an eye candy of a setup, fantastic work, Ray, and thank you for being on the show. Back-to-back -back dual setups, ladies and gents, and this one is all the way from Pakistan. Saad is 18 and is gearing up to study architecture, so we treated this room like a mini project. It became the testament of his planning, designing, and executing skills. He sketched it, 3D modeled it, then built most of it by himself over the last year. The desk, the monitor riser, the shelves over the TV, even the racing rig with the pedals mounted from the top for a more realistic feel. Very nice job. For the left setup, he's got two monitors, a 25 inch Red Dragon as the main and a 24 inch Lenovo as the secondary. I think this is actually the first time I've seen a Red Dragon monitor on setup wars. I thought they only made keyboards. On the console and entertainment side, there's a 55 inch TV that's connected to the PS5 and probably the PC as well for watching movies or YouTube. Actually, at first, I thought he would be sitting too close to it when he's gaming, but with the racing sim sitting between the chair and the TV, the viewing distance actually feels quite right. Also, just like in race setup, you can notice the darker backdrop behind the TV here, which I assume is meant to visually divide the space while also allowing him to immense himself better when playing racing games. The keyboards for each setup were kept separate with a Red Dragon custom keyboard for the main, an HP GK400Y for the entertainment one, and a T-Dagger mouse that he juggles between the two. For audio, he has a repurposed Samsung Home Cinema set that he placed underneath the monitor riser, but it's actually mainly used for decor. The real audio sources are the Zero Buds and the Fifine H6 headsets. Now the PC itself is a budget build with a Ryzen 5 3600 and an RX 5700 XT. If you want to sharpen the look, a set of black braided cable extensions or even the Hydrus cables that you can find on techsorshop.com would finish it off very nicely. Speaking of cables, the cable management from the front looks clean. 
The routing underneath the desk is rather interesting, but it does look like there's a system with cable channels, so they don't hang randomly. Looking at the setup overall, the only question I have is about the two boom arms behind the monitors. The right one holds the Fifine mic, so I'm curious what the deal is with the left one. Regardless, you've got a well-planned corner setup with a clear vision side. Thank you for coming on the show. What is it with racing sims today? I probably should have called this episode the Sim Rig Edition. So this one comes from Portugal and it belongs to Vidor, who has been gaming since the floppy disk era. Just like Saad earlier, he built almost everything himself and documented the whole process, which is always great to see. These step-by-step -step photos really show how the room came together over time. The desk is a chunky wood slab on IKEA drawers, and the back wall slats, the 3D accent wall, and the 3D printed hex leaf panels are all DIY. Even the license plate with his nickname behind the rig was made by him back when he worked at a car shop. Those hexagonal leaves were glued together one by one, and he uses them to display his favorite Funko figurines. He's got quite a big collection too. The Matrix ones are the only figurines that sit separately above the monitors, Maybe that's a reference to Escaping the Matrix, aka the rest of the collection, or maybe I am reading too much into it. For the main desk, there are two 27-inch ASUS monitors, with the primary being centered and the secondary offset slightly to the left. That leaves a bit of space between the screens and the tower for a SteelSeries headset. The racing rig, on the other hand, is rocking a single 34-inch Xiaomi Ultrawide. Peripherals are Razer across the board, He's got a Black Widow Chroma V4 for the main setup, a Huntsman V2 on the sim rig, and a Basilisk Ultimate that he swaps between them. Speaker placement is probably the only thing I would question. Typically, the subwoofer is placed underneath the desk, but here we see three out of the five speakers there, with the other two being hidden somewhere else. With this constellation, the desktop would block some of the sound, so I'm not entirely sure what the listening experience would be, though he does say in the notes that they are quite functional with excellent audio quality, so no telling here. The cable management right above the speakers looks great though, and I've got no complaints here. A Signum rack is holding some of the power bricks and a few cable bundles, while everything else is tied with cable clips and zip ties. By the way, great touch with the power cable running through that white tube to blend in with the wall, very clean work. The PC is a beauty inside the O11 Vision running a Ryzen 7 7800X3D and a PNY RTX 3080. I'm pretty sure Intel CPUs are extinct at this point because we haven't seen one in a few episodes by now. Also, side note, that trunks Funko Pop on the top of the fan just looks like it belongs there. The glowing effect from the RGB really makes it pop. I love the fact that the rest of the room is like a reflection of his hobbies. There is a surfboard, a Game of Thrones poster, a 3D printer corner, and some retro gear. I'm actually curious about the 3D wall panels covering a large portion of the wall on the right. Is there a specific acoustic or aesthetic purpose behind it? If you're watching this, let me know in the comment section. But other than that, beautiful work, Vidor. Thank you for sharing this with us. So that is it for episode 371. Again, apologies for giving some of you guys a heart attack. Uh, setup orders is not going anywhere, okay? The schedule might be skewed right now, but I promise you I'm gonna deliver at least one episode per month. As always, let me know in the comment section which of these setups was your absolute favorite. If you guys are still, even after 10 freaking years, are enjoying the show, let me know. Let me know. The best way you can let me know is by smacking that like button. Um, that gives me the motivation to continue. So thank you so much for watching. As always, thank you guys for tuning in for every single episode of Setup Wars. Uh, I do, do appreciate your loyalty. Enjoy your holiday season, and I'll see you very soon in the next one.